Hi, welcome back to the channel. It's Ian from Off Gave You a Penny Glen Cabin Life. Good morning to everybody. The time is 11 minutes past one in the morning, so it's nice and early. Um, I've had a couple of hours skip, that's all I've needed today. Uh, well, tonight I should say. I feel okay, so I'm bright as a button. Now, I wanted to talk about something, but before I do, I'm going to tell you my camera lenses. Because again, I know I keep mentioning it every video, but I am genuinely having people that's asking me. So the camera that I'm using is a Canon 70D. I am hoping next year uh, to upgrade to the Canon 90D, which I'm hoping to get. Uh, the lens I'm using today is one another one of my favourite lenses. I have so many that I really use more than anything. And this is a 28 by 135 millimeter lens. And this lens has stabilization in as well. So that's your lenses. So hopefully you can see me okay. Now I'm using a different microphone system today. What I've done is I've dug out my old stuff that I have that I never used. And what it is, it's a great big long cable I hope you can see it and it's wired straight into the micro microphone port and then just here on my lapel, I don't think you can see it, is that boyer. I don't know if you can see boyer there. Can you see that? Inside that's a battery and then it goes to my microphone that's here. So that's, that's that. So let me just clip this back on because it took me ages to clip it on in the first place. <laughs> Yeah. So, right, so that's what I'm using. Uh, microphone and camera gear and everything today. I'm not using the wireless microphone, so we'll see how this turns out. Hopefully the sound quality is okay. Now, what I wanted to talk to today is, a, is something personal to me. So you know what it is, it's about my bipolar. And I've been a bit nervous about doing this video, to be honest. So today's topic is off-grid with bipolar. Right, here we go. Why do I live off grid with bipolar? Because I don't call, I, truthfully, I don't call it well in normal society. Right, I'm being honest now. I had a nervous breakdown when I was 17, been in rehabs and hospitals and stuff like that. And I came out, I got married to Tracy, my wife, and I lived in Penison. I, I set up a big training school, which I did. My nose is itchy, sorry. Set up a big training school. I entered for doing gun dog training. Uh, I entered, I had a massive drive and I, I pushed and I pushed my dogs and I got them where they were really good. I went to competition and I wet floor with everybody. So I beat some big names and I run in the inter counties. I run at Chatsworth. I did all that. And then I became ill, and then with my heart and everything, and then I moved up here, moved in my cabin, did all that, off-grid, built, put all the solar up, put all the turbines up, everything, and I live here on my own. And because I'm here on my own, it's half a mile to my nearest neighbour, I've got 28 acres of woodland, and I've got a pond over the other side, so I've got everything. This place was bought for me to do my gun dog training. But I'm too ill to do that now. I really cannot do it. If I literally, I've said this before and it's absolute truth. If I walk from here to the bottom of the paddock and come back, I'm knackered. Honestly. Honestly. So for me, being a YouTuber is a good way to focus my life because I enjoy it. I enjoy the building work. And you're all helping me by funding, by doing donations and also the Patreon and also uh, the, by watching these videos, which means the adverts come on the videos and I get paid for the adverts and everything like that. So all the money, and I promise you every penny of it that comes in, goes towards building materials. So I am very grateful for all your help. Now, I live here. One of the reasons I live here is because, if, for instance, if I move back down south and I live with my dad or I live with my brother, then I'd be all right at first. And then I would start getting, feeling the pressures of family life and it would make me ill. I know that about myself and I've got to be honest and admit that. So for me living here in this cabin, it is a harder way of life because everything's harder because it's off grid. And then obviously the cooking with the stove and everything like that and boiling the pans for the hot water, everything. But it keeps me well. 
even though my life's harder, it's keeping me well. And it's making me that because I don't see anybody, then if I'm having a day that I'm not feeling so good, then nobody sees and I'm fine. But I had a friend of mine that once said to me, and I, and I want you to be honest and, and think about this. People always say that when you suffer from manic depression or that type of illness, or oh, Arian's having a bad day today, he's, he, he's not right well. Well, let's go back a step with that and be honest now, right? Everybody, no matter who you are, has a bad day. Everybody does. They have a day where they feel really raw for the worked up the tents and everything like that. Everybody has days like that. But when you become a manic depressive or bipolar, you can't have a bad day anymore. Because those natural bad days that you have, oh, Ian's not right well today. Oh, Ian's not well with his illness today. It's not a case of that. I was just having an off day. Do you mean like everybody has an off day? It's like I remember when I was in hospital when I first got ill, and this shows how far back this is. I sat down in front of my doctor and my family were around me and he said that your nerves aren't so good Ian. So he said, what I want you to do is start smoking. Absolute truth that. He said, what you to start smoking and it'll calm your nerves. It's good for your nerves smoking. And my mum said, it's not smoking because I've never smoked. Well, I, I do now in later life. I have a cigarette and stuff like that. And um, he said, uh, he says, no, no, it'd be good for Harry to smoke because, Harry, doctor said it'd be all right for him to smoke because um, it'd be good for his nerves, it'll calm him down. And we all said, no, he's not, I'm telling you now, he's not. And I never ended up smoking because I didn't get the wrong side of my mum. <laughs> not in a rush. She only about this side, but she might imagine my mum, you didn't get the wrong side there. So, but yeah, I wrote some other stuff down, hold on. Um, and I'll tell you another thing about bipolar you can be in denial with a lot of things as well it's like how can I put this I always say how can I put this but it's right it's trying to find the right words to say it really but when you become ill you become lost as a person you become lost you don't know you lose your way in life you really do when you have a breakdown and because you're not attached to the world, because you're in a world in your brain because you're not so good, then you don't really see how your illness is affecting everybody around you. You just know, well, I've not been so good, so I've had to go in hospital, and now I've come back out and I'm okay. And then they give you pills, right? Now, I remember saying to the doctor, I said, if I take these pills, I'm going to be right. He went, no. I never forgot it. He said, no. I said, well, why am I taking them then? He said, because these pills will give you two steps on a ladder. And he said, it's for you then to work your way through and get further up that ladder to the top. And I thought, I said, well, what formula is it to get ready? He says, every single person has a different formula to get well again. But some people never find it and some do. And I've been lucky I found that formula. I'm sorry I had to get off just then, it cut dead, it's simply because the batteries went flat and the memory card was full, so I've just switched everything over. So yeah, like I was saying, um, this place is a good tonic for me, it really is, and I think the reason why I'm as well as I am today is because I don't have all them pressures like before, and you know, it's like, Everybody's got to, how can I pull it? Um, look, when you become ill, you go on tablets and you, well, you don't always, but a lot of people go on tablets. But they come out of hospital and they find they can cope in society. And when they do, they think, hmm, I'm well now. I wonder if I really do need to take this medication. Is it really what's right for me? I, I don't feel like, you know, I think maybe it being a blip, I was just having a bad time. And maybe I wasn't, wasn't actually ill originally. Now that goes through nearly every person with bipolar at some point. Now I've done it and I've come off my pills and I've become very, very ill very, very fast. And then I've gone back in hospital and then come back out again. But I've done that a couple of times but remember, I've been ill when I was 17, so we're talking a long time ago, I went through them scenarios. 
but like now I take my pills every day because I know if I don't take my pills I'll become ill and if I become ill I could lose what I've got so I love living here I love the lifestyle that I have and I don't want to get too ill that I've got to go back in rehab and lose everything I've, this is what I mean about lose everything I'll be literally coming I could I could be in rehab six months and then I'm back out and I've I'm back at square one again and I don't want that so I always take my pills, but you'll be surprised how many people with bipolar or schizophrenia or any sort of illness always goes through that scenario of being in denial that they always think, I'm sure, I'm sure it was just some kind of a blip and it's not really me. But it's like other things as well. You find sometimes your motivation when you're having a bad day, your motivation is not very good. But most people have that, even though they don't have any sort of bipolar or anything. But... When you, go, when you go through your down phases, then you don't want to eat, you don't want to cook, you don't want to clean, you, you just don't want to do anything. And everything you do is a complete and utter struggle. And yet, you could go through that for five or six days, and you could feel really rough and really ill, and literally you could go to bed and wake up and suddenly everything's back to normal again. Absolutely great. And then you could be okay all day, and then suddenly, boom, it'll hit you again, and you'll go down. So that's why sometimes I say I've been feeling a bit down lately and because it's just my moods going up and down. So, but like I'm taking, I'm taking a big risk in a way talking about my illness because, you know, a lot of people don't. I'm from a generation that you shunned upon for, with, for having this illness. But like now it's a big fashion to be a bipolar with all these youngsters. They can't wait to be one. And it's not a fashion. It's something that's, a very serious illness that you suffer with and the medical council of the britain and that they're on about changing it to a brain disease aren't they so they're on about de reclassifying it as that so that's not really very nice <laughs> i'd rather be called a bipolar and say you've got a brain disease if you suffer with bipolar you're part of a big club in a way it's a daft way to say it there's millions of people around the world with bipolar and they're like a big family once you meet somebody. But the problem is, when you meet somebody with manic depression, then you're not coming to them and saying, hi, how are you today? It's like you take their baggage on top of your own and they're having a bad time nine times out of ten. And then that can make you, even if you don't feel rough, you can feel the pressure off them and doing it. So some people suffer with that as well and some people don't. Some people can mingle with people with bipolar all the time. And if they're having a rough time, it doesn't affect them. But it does because I pick up on stress a lot. If anything, anybody around me has got stress, it can make me have stress. So, but, yeah, yeah. It's an hard one, this conversation for me, to be honest. You might not think it is. But it is, because I worry, I, I know I've said it already, but I do worry about talking about it all. But I want to give back, because I've had a lot of people out there that's helped me over the years with my illness. And I feel that now's the time, really, that all my generation that became ill should give something back for what we all the help we've had and try and help people, this next generation that become ill with it, and try and give them the support that they need. And... I've had quite a lot of people contact me with uh, bipolar uh, since I've been doing these videos and they've said, you know, it's great that you're doing the videos and speaking out about it and awareness. So I've still got a lot of friends from back in the old days that have my condition, but uh, I've kind of lost track with a lot of them, not by choice. It's just something that because I've been doing this and other things, I've just just uh, lost track with them really and it's a shame because I'd like to get in contact with them all again so right now listen I'm going to leave you in peace you stay safe and you stay well and remember if you feel unwell you feel depressed you feel anything like that you get help straight away you don't think I'll leave it a few days see how I am get help because you know it's like to get a doctor's appointment you might, have, might as well be ringing now you know in a week's time you'll get an appointment if you leave it a week it's another week on top so whatever i've been talking about it's not a gospel that you do this and you do that it, the, i'm just talking about how it affects me and what's best for me right you stay safe and you stay well